Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy. Uh, we, we have Diego Molina with us, who is a staff software engineer at Source Lab. Right, he's a core contributor and maintainer in the Selenium project. So I, I had a couple of questions. I think we also have the questions related to what's coming new, right, in the Selenium 4.6.0. So let's discuss about it. And there are a couple of two or three. What are the future plans of Selenium, right? Those things we are going to discuss. First of all, let's welcome uh, Diego to the Testing Academy. Thanks a lot for joining, Diego. Thank you for the invitation. From all, happy to be here and. And I hope that I can share some interesting insights to, to you and your community. Yeah, thanks a lot, Diego. So my first question, which is what's new in Selenium, right? As a core contributor, because you are a core contributor and maintainer for Selenium for more than five years, if I'm not wrong. So what's new coming in the Selenium 4.6? Can you talk about it? Right? We have a few bug fixes and, and new small features that, that are the normal thing that happens in a release, for mm -hmm. example. We also have very good contributions from different uh, folks in the community. One of the main ones is that uh, so Selenium 4, the, the new grid, brings you a mm -hmm. feature that talks about observability. So you can see all uh, the details that go behind every execution of every command um, okay. through the um, like exporting different different sets of information that allows you to see how mm -hmm. long. It quest is going to take, if it was a, a success, an error, what was the error. So a lot of insights from it. Uh, the issue we have had with that feature is that you need to set it up, you need to wire it in. So we have documentation showing you how to do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like we, we haven't done the step that makes you really easy for you. So someone who has been contributing to Selenium for a long time, mm -hmm. um, they sent a pull request to the Docker Selenium project, which is Selenium Grid inside Docker. And now with just a simple command doing Docker Compose, you have um, observability in Selenium Grid working out of the box, which was already working, but now it's just very, very easy to, to get it out and running. So that's one of the main mm -hmm. contributions on the side of documentation and making uh, lives uh, easier for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the main new feature in Selenium uh, 4.60 is the beta one uh, of Selenium Manager. What Selenium Manager will do for you is to manage all the logic be behind and around um, the browser drivers. So the typical problem that you have when Chrome 107 is released and you still have Chrome uh, Chrome driver 105 and so on. So what Selenium Manager will do during this first initial release will work as a fallback. So this means if you don't have browser driver on the path, if you don't have uh, like a third party um, software that is managing the browser drivers for you, or uh, if you are not setting the path of the driver, then uh, the normal execution flow will will fail because you don't have anything ready. And right, what the right. manager will do is will will realize that and then will check the browser version you have. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Edge uh, 105, and then it will look and download the browser driver for that exact version. So this means that you can stop configuring drivers on your own. You you can mm -hmm. stop doing that. And um, this also works for Selenium Grid. So okay. when you have Selenium Grid running in different machines, you only need to have the browser installed. And mm -hmm. Grid will rely on Selenium Manager to configure the, the browser driver for you. For now, since it's the first release, the beta version of Selenium Manager, it mm -hmm. only works with Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft Edge. Okay. And it's a fallback, right? So it will only act if you don't have anything configured to um, get your browser driver working. Uh, there are long-term plans for Selenium Manager, mm -hmm. but what you need to do to start using Selenium Manager is just upgrade to 4.60, mm -hmm. get rid of your browser drivers on the path and third-party software that manages browser drivers. You can, that's the only thing you need to do, nothing else. Right, right. I mean, uh, this is Selenium Manager, especially, I think it's one of the core highlight for this update, right? Where uh, we used to use web managers, right? Because what happens is whenever you're running multiple test cases, right? So suddenly there is some update in Chrome and your test case start failing. We have seen this. I mean, we are running multiple cases. We are running like more than 15,000 cases. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Selenium Manager, I'm totally excited for it. I don't know what about the future plans, but definitely as a fallback, what you are saying, right, it will be very, very beneficial, especially we don't have to type or use third party things like web driver managers. And what are the future plans for this? I mean, apart from observability and uh, the Selenium Manager, what else we have in? 4.6. I think one of the interesting milestones that I mean we didn't uh, really plan it as as to be in mm -hmm. 4.60 is to have a Selenium grid that is 
much more stable. To, to refresh our mind, uh, our head is uh, the fact that Selenium Grid has been rewritten from scratch for Selenium 4. Mm -hmm. We did a really good job in it, like making code simple, making code more reusable, uh, having a better documentation. So, so it's much easier to improve the, the grid nowadays. But uh, as it's obvious, when, when you have a first version, some, yeah. some bugs, some, some uh, unexpected use cases uh, are, are not covered. So it takes a while, right? Because uh -huh. you need to get the feedback from users. Not everyone actually tries the beta version. So it, it, it takes time and it has taken maybe be a bit more than one year until we were able to to have a more stable selenium grid and this is thanks to the contributions to the bug reports and different things so we have some bugs that were there for like four or five months and we were not able to figure them out and feedback mm -hmm. and people contributing to all those things and this is normal this is normal when when you have software that is so widely used it's right. completely normal to find a good amount of bugs when you have like a new version of of, of a new software component when you have a small project starting or just one year ago you may think that it's working really well but mm. so many people are using it as selenium so when you see that we are getting bug reports and fixing them that's plainly the result of, of, of selenium that is being super widely used and as we showed in the keynote uh, some months ago in the conference uh, actually the selenium the usage of selenium has grown year over year we just don't have marketing to show off those numbers makes sense, makes sense. my next question is uh, what do you think about the competitors so, i mean not as a competitor but definitely there are uh, new tools in the market right which are jumping around for example playwright is there what do you think as a contributor what are the thoughts that you have i mean how it is impacting selenium yes or no what do you think so there are different perspectives um mm -hmm. i think first thought that i had was uh, like there was pressure um mm -hmm. Because um, Selenium was the only tool doing this, right. uh, like a very well-known tool, solid yes. for a long time. And then it, I think releasing Selenium 4 with such a big delay was a, was a cost like was a, was something that hurt us yes. and and that gave the opportunity to other tools to, to, tools to become more popular but in the end i think uh in the selenium project i think we're getting it right in the sense of being open and actually mm -hmm. we have left the door open for other tools like playwright or cypress or cypress mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. to, to get in contact with us or if they need we can actually get in touch with them to see if there is a way we can work together cool. because we'll together. exactly because mm -hmm. One of the key uh, parts of Selenium is to work based on standards. So that's why we have the W3C web driver, because the idea is that we want to offer you features that are feature proof. We don't want to do things like maybe Cypress today has offered you a feature that works well, mm. but if Chrome changes something in their internals, mm. maybe the feature will break in the next release. Same thing for, for, for Playwright. So what we want to do is to um, offer a standard and actually the web driver to the browser and testing tools group in the W3C. Members from the Selenium team are there. Mm. Members from Mozilla, uh, from, from Apple, from Microsoft, from Google are there working together mm. to have a standard across mm -hmm. uh, all browsers to supply the functionalities that you see today in the CDP um, flavor of Selenium and Thanks. what you see in Cypress and Playwright. Well, a clear example of that is that people who work in Puppeteer are mm -hmm. helping us to bring this as a standard. And right. the invitation to those projects is if they're interested in collaborating in standards and offering future-proof tests, it right. would be really right. cool to have them there and to listen to their opinion. And, right. and yeah, right. one, one key part about having those projects is that competition is good because you, right. you, you snap and you think about how to improve your own project yeah we're just an open source project we're not a company mm -hmm. i mean they have funding mm -hmm. and, and they have people for every single part of the team of, of the project yeah so that's the downside that it's really hard to compete to projects that are backed by companies that run for profit so makes sense, makes sense. so i think selenium is looking for more collaborative ready rather than being going towards competitiveness and other things yeah yeah because what we believe is in standards. So no. Let's take as an example WebDriver.io. WebDriver.io no. is not part of the Selenium project, but they no. work on WebDriver. And we have no issue promoting their content. We have no okay. issue like having them in our chat, like collaborating and working on features together, maybe changing standards that work for WebDriver.io. And we have no issue to collaborate with any other project, but I think it's not the same on, on their side. Like we have actually tried to reach out to them, but they haven't really replied um, in a positive way. And what about the future plans? I mean, I really want to know. What are the future plans? Is Selenium 5 coming? What is it? We, right now? 
have a few bullet points about mm -hmm. the future of Selenium 5. We don't want to wait two or three years for it. Right, right. because four was too late. I mean, it was too late. We are thinking about something around 2023 or maybe early 2024. Mm -hmm. And most of the bullet points we have today is around um, modernizing the bindings. So okay. one of the critical things is that Python doesn't work well mm -hmm. in all the use cases of CDP right. because maybe you are aware that Python has evolved to this async await um, paradigm mm -hmm. and we don't have that in the binding so we need to rewrite and change things in the bindings to make them work. It's the mm -hmm. same story for, for, for .NET mm -hmm. so we will do some maybe we will do some breaking changes for Selenium 5 in around those mm -hmm. languages okay. but also uh, like around Java we're thinking about maybe making Java 11 or Java 17 mandatory mm -hmm. for, for Selenium 5. Actually, right now, some features only work for Java 11 um, okay. because we need to, to move forward. We have been very right. kind with backwards compatibility. So those yeah. are the things that are maybe not features, but they will be important for users. The other two main features that we are trying to push along, mm -hmm. we're not really sure if WebDogger by that will be ready for okay. Selenium 5. But what we want to have is a set of methods and APIs that will leave you ready to start using WebDriver by day. Uh, so that's one of the key things. And the other the very important thing that we are working on is, is making Selenium Manager as a default uh, option. So right now it's a fallback and we're mm -hmm. still developing Selenium Manager. For example, in the next version, what we want to have is support for proxies. So maybe you are in a company that has no access to the internet. Okay. So downloading the browser drive for you is not possible. So mm -hmm. we want to add that. So you are able to have a mirror, all things like that. Mm -hmm. And then in the near future, we want to also support um, if you want to use a beta browser or a, or a, or a dev browser. We also want to add support for Internet Explorer, so the, the, the server, the driver, we want to download it as well for people who are still using Windows uh, with Edge and this IE mode. In the midterm, we want to download the browser for you. So if you don't have the browser there and you want to run with Edge, you want to download the browser and leave it ready for you. So in the future, if you are a person who wants to get started with Selenium, it's just copying and pasting the code and running it. That's it. Or maybe you have a new laptop and yeah. you don't want to install everything and, and that's it. So all those features that will be part of Selenium Manager, we don't mm -hmm. want to wait until Selenium 5 to release them. We want to release them bit by bit okay. along the core okay. theories. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do in Selenium 5 is to make Selenium Manager the default. So it will be the first line of defense, mm -hmm. let's call it. So those, those are the bullet points. And we're starting to talk internally about writing down all those points and creating a formal roadmap for Selenium 5 because mm -hmm. yeah, we don't want to wait two or three years for that. We just want to wait maybe like one year or one and a half year stops. Yeah. It's amazing, amazing. I mean, lots of new stuff is coming in Selenium then. All right. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Diago. I think this was very, very helpful. You helped us to understand what is new in 4.6, especially, and what's the future for Selenium, right? Because see, we are extensively using Selenium and anyone who is using Selenium extensively they want uh, to be updated, right? They want their self to be updated what's new is coming, right? So I think this is this will be helpful. Thanks a lot for your time. And I hope uh, we'll see you again on the channel, right? Somewhere whenever we have five, six or seven Selenium, right? Sure. And, uh, um, thanks a lot for sharing it. Thank you for the invitation. And, and whenever you feel that we should come here again to share more details about Selenium, don't, don't doubt to, to invite us. So thank you very much. Sure.